Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the all new MacBook Pro. And this is not the top of the line model like I unboxed the other day with the M1 Max version. This is the M1 Pro. So if we flip it over, you can see this is the 16 gigabyte of unified memory version with a one terabyte SSD. And this one is a little bit different in that it's not the base model, but it's the model that I think most people should probably step up to. And what I mean by that is what you get with this is an M1 Pro with a 10 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, and a 16 core neural engine. So like I said, it's not the top of the line. Again, 16 gigabyte of unified memory, and this comes in at $2,499. Now, now, the good thing about this is it's available now. So you can go into a store and pick up this exact model, at least in my local store, it's available. Now let's go ahead and open it up. So here's a pull tab on the top. Let's open this up and it's sort of worked. So I got to get out my unboxing knife. Give me just a moment. Here's my unboxing knife and let's cut right here. There we go. And let's open up the package here. There we go. Now we'll compare this to the size of some other MacBooks, the previous generation and my first editing MacBook in a moment, but let's go ahead and open this up. And here you can see the MacBook Pro. Now this is the size I think most people will go with because there's not really a compromise between the 14 and the 16 other than the display size. So let's go ahead and remove this for now and let's take a look at what's in the box. So we've got the normal paperwork and just like the other video I did, we've got black Apple stickers. So Mac Pro Apple stickers are included in the box. And then of course your quick start guide and your warranty guide but that's something that I always appreciated were the black stickers. Now inside we have a power adapter. Let's go ahead and open this up. And this one that comes with it, I can't get it out of this paper wrapper here. There we go. This one is a 96 watt adapter. So this is a USB-C adapter. And of course, again, we don't get the extender like you did years ago. You can buy one of those if you want an extension off the end of that. I, I always liked that, but unfortunately this doesn't come with it, but this is your typical 96 watt power adapter. And then we have, of course, the new MagSafe cable. So this is MagSafe to USB-C. So as you can see here, you've got USB-C on one end here and then MagSafe on the other. And you can see it's a little bit thinner than previous generation MagSafe. And then the other thing is this is a braided cable. So it's really nice and braided. So let's set this aside and look at the MacBook itself. So here's the MacBook and let's take the paper wrapper off here. And it looks very familiar, although now it's squared off. And of course it has MacBook Pro pressed into the aluminum of the outside or aluminum, depending on where you live. And then it looks like we have pentalobe screws all the way around. And then of course the rubber feet, we also have vents on either side. Now along the right side edge or left side edge, you have MagSafe, you have two Thunderbolt 4 slash USB-C ports and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that also has high impedance support now. So that could sound a lot better on the front. It looks pretty typical. And then on the right hand side, you have HDMI, another Thunderbolt 4 port and an SD card slot. So just like the 16 inch only a little bit smaller. So let's set this down and let me show you compared to the last couple generations. So here is a 2016 MacBook Pro. So if I place it on top, you can see the size difference. The M1 is the same sort of size, but it's a little bit bigger width wise and sort of depth wise is here. And then also thickness, you can see the difference as well. So it's definitely a little bit thicker. So I'm okay with the extra thickness since it reminds me of the previous generation. Now, like I said, I have my original editing MacBook and this is a 2008 MacBook. And so this is when you could actually, you'll see it's pretty scratched up. This is when you could actually open the bottom and replace things yourself. So that's what this version is. We'll close that up. And to give you an idea of thickness, it's very similar to this one, although a little bit thinner. So 
this had a CD or super drive slot and it gives you an idea of thickness. So it's not as thick as the older one with the drive slot in it, but it is pretty thick in general. So again, if I spin this around, you can see we had a ton of ports back then. And it, again, it gives you an idea of thickness. Now, this is definitely a step in the right direction, in my opinion, bringing back ports for pros that want different sort of connectivity, that SD card slot and more, although we do have CF Express and things like that now. Now this comes in at 3.5 pounds or 1.6 kilograms, and it's pretty heavy, but not really too much. And you'll get used to that pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and open it up. It's booting up and the first thing you can see, of course, is that notch and it's saying hello and the notch doesn't really bother me. And I showed in the 16 inch version that the cursor goes behind the notch. So it's kind of something you wouldn't really expect. Maybe I thought it'd follow around the outside or maybe we'll see a different behavior in the future, but it goes around the notch. Now, let me go ahead and get this set up in just a moment. But as you can see, it has the black keyboard with the black background and full size keys. So I love that it has full size keys. We have our, our power button or pretty much just our touch ID button and then our volume keys. One thing we do not have is keyboard brightness. They've left that in the control center. So I went to press that yesterday on the 16 inch and realized it wasn't there. So that's something I wish they'd have instead of the microphone and sort of do not disturb button, but at least we have full size keys and a full size escape key. So we'll go ahead and set this up. I'll select my language. Once you select your language, we'll select our region. It's switched to the United States. We'll click continue. Then we have accessibility options. So vision, motor, hearing, and cognitive talked about that before we'll hit not now, and then I'll connect to Wi-Fi. Now we've got data and privacy. We'll click continue. And then it's asking if I want to migrate from a different machine, I'll just click not now. And now we need to put in the Apple ID. We'll agree to the terms and click agree. Now we need to set a password for the computer. It's setting up iCloud now after going into your account and clicking past find my, now we have make this your new Mac. You can turn on or off options. So if you don't want device analytics on, you can customize that and change it and go back one by one, or just leave everything as default. We'll just go ahead and click continue for now. Now we'll set up touch ID. We'll put our finger on here and this is always really nice to have. No face ID on this though, even though we have a notch and again, we'll do that again, set this up, touch ID is set up and then we'll click continue. Now it's asking if I want to set up Apple pay, I'll set that up later. And now we're at the home screen. It's asking if it wants to use or can use my current location. Now, some people have asked me to show screen brightness and because this video is not in HDR and you need a screen that can go this bright, it's very hard to show. Now it goes up to a thousand nits of brightness when you're just using it regularly. However, if you're in HDR content, it can go up to 1600 nits of brightness. So it goes really, really bright, very similar to what you have on an iPhone. And also this is a 14.2 inch liquid retina XDR display. It's 3024 by 1964 with 254 pixels per inch. It looks really, really good. It's hard to explain what it looks like. Let me put it next to maybe the 13 inch MacBook pro M one. So you can see that. On the left, I have the 13 inch MacBook Pro, the M1 version, and on the right is the new 14 inch. And so the screens, you can see the screen size difference. You have a little bit more room for the menu bar and it looks pretty good overall. Now, as far as the screen brightness, like I said, I can't really show it because if I go full brightness, you're just not going to be able to see that on the camera. The new screen is definitely sharper, looks really good and has great viewing angles as well. The old one's not bad, but the new one definitely looks a little bit nicer, has better contrast, and I can't wait to use it for maybe HDR video. Now I could show this in an HDR video. If you want to see that, if you have a recent iPhone, you'll be able to see this screen brightness. So if you want me to show that in a different video, let me know in the comments below. Now, as far as the keyboard, you can see the difference here. You have the full size keys and they are basically the same, just with a black background. So they look the same. They feel the same when you're pressing them. They're almost identical as far as that goes, but you just have that nice keyboard row at the top. Now I know some people prefer the touch bar. I actually don't. I really like the physical keys. I find that the touch bar was annoying and got in the way. I often hit it when I was typing or I had to take my eyes off of my work and look down to do what I needed to do on the touch bar and then look back. I think the idea is great for some people, but not for everyone.
Now, as far as benchmarks, we'll take a look at that in a moment, but let's first take a look at the camera here. So we'll go into QuickTime and go to file. Then we'll go to new movie recording. Give it just a moment here and let's select maximum for the quality. It's a 1080p webcam and let's go ahead and hit record. Now we're recording from the webcam. Now, like I said, it's only 1080p. It will be good for conference calls. And after looking at the footage from the 16 inch, it's just not that good. It's fine for conference calls and things, but the speakers and the audio are great as well as the microphones. These are new studio mics and they really sound quite good. They sound very close to this actual studio mic and I was very surprised how good they've actually got them to sound. They have a better noise floor this time so less interference and it sounds very impressive for just small microphones inside a laptop. So we'll go ahead and stop that and I'll export it. So we'll go to file export as 1080p and let's go ahead and just export that to the desktop. See how fast this is and M1 Pro export. We'll give it just a moment to export saving and about five seconds left and we're done. So we'll delete that. Now we've got that file and we're good to go. So this is super fast. Now I'm not sure how it is compared to an M one max. We'll check that with benchmarks in just a moment, but let's also take a quick listen to the speakers. I've downloaded some royalty free music so we can listen to the speakers just a little bit. Let's go ahead and I'll move the microphone so you can hear it the same as me. So there's a surprising amount of bass and I hit 88 decibels on the speakers when they were turned all the way up. So they're plenty loud and they're very clear. Maybe you heard that or maybe you didn't with the microphone as you're only going to hear as good as the microphone can pick up, but they sound really good. I'm surprised at the amount of the amount of bass they have as well. Let's go ahead and check this keyboard out. It should be the same as the other, but I'll just type on it quickly and let's do that. I'll move the microphone so you can hear what it sounds like. The sound of the keyboard is nice and quiet. It feels very good. Now my daughter did try the 16 inch MacBook pro and said she didn't think it felt as good as the M one MacBook air. However, I think they're pretty much the same. So I guess it just depends on what you like, but it feels nice and clicky. It has good feedback and it's what you would expect from the most recent version of MacBooks. Now, before we look at some of the benchmarks, the battery life on this is up to 17 hours. So where the 16 inch is up to 21 hours because of its larger size, it can have a larger battery. This has a 70 watt hour lithium polymer battery that can charge about 50% in 30 minutes, but you need that 96 watt compatible charger that comes with it. Otherwise, if you've got the lower end one that comes with the base model, it doesn't have the same fast charging. It still will charge. Okay. But I'm not sure why they didn't include the same adapter for both. Now let's go ahead and run a couple benchmarks. Now let's go into black magic disc speed test. We'll select the one gigabyte stress test option and click start. You'll see we got 6,640.8 megabytes a second for write speed and up to about 4,564 megabytes per second for read speed. So it's almost 5,000 for read speed, incredibly fast drives in these new MacBooks. Now, as far as Geekbench, let's go into that and we'll go to Geekbench five. As you can see, I have three different MacBooks here. So on the far left, I have the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch, the top of the line version of that. Then in the middle, I have the M1 Pro 14 inch and then the M1 Max 16 inch on the far right. I used the latest version of Geekbench 5 and ran the benchmarks and I ran them multiple times to confirm the findings. So on the far left, we have the M1 version and for single core, it scored 1,748. 
on the M1 Pro, 1751 and on the M1 Max, 1778. Not a huge difference between those, but when we get to multi-core, we see a difference. So on the M1, 7,629, on the M1 Pro, 10,946, and on the M1 Max, 12,434. Now let's also run a metal test. So we'll go to compute and run the metal test for the graphics, the Geekbench metal test completed. And on the M one, we have 21,728 on the M one pro 38,838 and on the M one max 65,715. Now we'll run one more test. We'll use Cinebench and just see what it does there. And on Cinebench, we'll run the multi-core test. Now I moved the MacBooks apart as they're running this test, as I heard the fans start to turn on, on the M one pro so far, nothing from the M one max. Now Cinebench completed and you can see that the devices are fairly hot right under the keyboard, about 98 degrees Fahrenheit under the M one pro the M one max is about the same as you can see here with the thermals and they did both kick on their fans. If we look at the M one, the regular M one, it's a little bit cooler and I didn't hear the fans. So there's definitely a difference between them, but they were getting better scores on the M one pro and M one max. So as far as the scores, you can see the M one scored 7,806. The M one pro was 12,192 and the M one max was 12,351. Now this does not indicate that they're slow or anything like that. Since they're below a Ryzen thread ripper, that's quite an achievement, quite above a core I nine CPU. And I think they're plenty fast. Of course, you've got to consider that they have different encoders on them. So the M1 Max has double ProRes encoders. The M1 Pro has a separate encoder for that. So similar to an afterburner card. So that's all built into the chipset on the M1 Pro and M1 Max. So overall, pretty impressive as far as the way it feels, as far as heat, it's not too hot on the bottom here at all. So it wouldn't burn your lap. It seems it seems to be staying nice and cool. Now, finally, just to show you side by side, the 16 versus the 14 inch, just wanted to show you the difference in overall size. So definitely a difference there. Thickness wise, the 16 inches, only maybe a millimeter or two thicker, probably a millimeter. And you can see the overall size here. So definitely a much bigger laptop. 14 inch is nice because it has all of the same specs. If you get the top of the line version, so you can get an M one max in the 14 inch and have all of the same processing power. But let me know if there's any specific questions you have about the M one pro version of the MacBook, the 14 inch. And if you want to see either a comparison or a final review between which one, and if you're picking one up, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.